Hi, and welcome to Sliders and Wings, a podcast about the TV show Sliders. And the TV show Wings. And all the other forgotten TV shows of the 90s. I'm Valerie Temple. And I'm Rachel Cox. Hi, Val. Hi, Rachel. How are you? I'm frantic. I'm in the middle of a move. And uh, I've never moved four people before. Yeah, that's a lot. We took a hiatus, like a summer vacation. Without but, warning to the yeah. listeners. <laughs> oh, sorry, everybody. But it does not seem like you have allowed yourself to relax at all. In fact, you are doing something so stressful that I can't even think about it. I actually feel okay about it because I've been doing it really slowly. And I've also gotten rid of a lot of things. So that feels good. That's really nice. That's, to me, the best part of moving. One, unearthing a lot of crazy stuff. Like, oh my God, I haven't thought about this in eight years or whatever. And then also just taking the opportunity to like get rid of just a ton of stuff. It's this perfect storm where normally the other spouse would be like, well, you don't have to get rid of that. But like under these circumstances, they're like, toss it. Right. No, when we were moving to Cleveland, we were like, get rid of everything. We rented this one size truck. And if it doesn't fit, we're just leaving it. Yeah. I have been selling a lot of stuff on Facebook marketplace. And if you guys ever come across Ghostbusters things, just buy them because I listed these 80s Ghostbusters toys. They sold like within five minutes. Wow. I did a, a Facebook marketplace no-no, which is I listed it for too cheap. These people were messaging me, asking me questions about it. And then I was like, oh shit. And I looked on eBay, I realized they were too cheap. And then someone ordered it and I like canceled the order. I was like, my bad, never mind. And I like, relisted <laughs> it at three times the price. People in my Facebook marketplace will just, um, this has happened to me before. If I sell it to someone else or something, they go, you can't do business this way. Like, this isn't a business. Right. Like I'm a person. I'm a fucking face. And also like. I'm not an auctioneer. I never go on Facebook marketplace because it really looks seedy to me. <laughs> it really just looks. Seedier than Craigslist? Yes, because Craigslist doesn't have all of the photos out there, just like the bad photography. There's just something about it that just feels really, really gross. <laughs> I, I wish it was more like Craigslist and that there was no, so it's different because you can ship things and there and therefore like there's payments going through there. And it's just really confusing because I don't know, sometimes people want to pay you outside of the app or like if it's a purpose person, then they're just handing you cash. And then you, I don't know, I find it, it's pretty confusing, but there's just a ton of people in there. I was stupid and I ordered something thinking it was like from someone in the, it's, it has an address in the US, some earrings, but they were being dropped shipped from China and they like took a month to get here. I was oh, like, God, even I keep getting fooled by this. <laughs> And also, I just really don't like that Craigslist can be a lot more anonymous, I think. You know, you could use like a burner email address, That's true. which also I do recommend if you ever uh, do anything on Craigslist, because the very few things I've done on Craigslist, at least lately, announcing a yard sale or something, you just get inundated with all of these like spam emails. Oh, it seems like you need money fast. Uh, <laughs> so are, are you interested in this multi-level marketing thing? And I'm like, no, take it away. With Facebook Marketplace, it's like connected to your Facebook. That is weird. You're like, Ugh. you can see the profile of the person who's selling you his old clothes. Yeah, I don't yeah, like that. It is strange. Like but anyways, it's not too bad. I mean, I mostly pack everything up. So that's great. It's kind you of like going to be like a last minute throwing all the clothes in garbage bags and throwing everything else in a box. And right. we don't actually have to be out by a certain time. Are you getting professional movers though? Yeah. I said to Greg, could we find five people that we know and each pay them a hundred dollars? No. <laughs> Being an adult is getting movers. And I got to tell you, once you get them, you'll never go back. It's so sweet. <laughs> we did have them last time and they filled up the truck and we still had a bunch of stuff left and they just oh. were like, well, we got to go. <laughs> oh God. We did like a last minute scramble by like shoving stuff in cars and trying to get <laughs> the stuff to the house. The sweetest move we ever had because of movers was when we were moving out of a Trinity house in mm -hmm, Philly. I remember. You've got the really tight spirally Ooh. staircases. And we were like, yeah, this is what the money's for. You get to figure out how to get this down <laughs> these stairs because I don't even know how we got them up there. <laughs> Good luck to there you. There was that one very um, funny scene from Friends where they're trying to get the couch around. It's like, pivot, pivot. pivot. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm having to cut it in half. I think about that. <laughs> It is really, really funny. And that is one thing that Friends did okay. It was their version of the Seinfeld parking garage episode where it's yeah. like all in the stairwell. The show we are discussing this week is Studs. Glad to have you here. Welcome to Studs on Marco Carlo. So darn glad you can join us. We have three beautiful young ladies here who, 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 who needed us, who wanted us to set them up on blind dates with two happening studs. Describe your ultimate guy for me. 
My ultimate guy, he has to be good looking, something like Mario Van Peoples, and be real sexy and passionate like Steven Seagal. <laughs> That's right, Studs. Studs premiered on March 11th, 1991 as a mid-season series, and it did well enough in its run to be renewed for a full season. Aired for two more full seasons. What year? 1991. The hair is so, it's a a lot of waterfall. It's very, very early 90s. Just everything about it. The funniest, and this is mainly what I have to say about Studs, is that my memory of catching it late at night I must've been staying up late on a weekend and it's on super late, like 11 and catching it and just thinking like it was the most sexy, risque, naughty thing I could be watching. And then watching it now, it it is so fucking quaint. It is adorable. (laughs) It might as well be Little House on the Prairie. So so like the idea of it is it's Love Connection for the 90s. It's a dating show where- And is this the same format as Love Connection was? Oh, completely. Love Connection actually was, I think one guy goes out with three girls or something, or like one girl goes out with three guys. That's not the one where the person, that's Mystery Date, where they're behind the green? That's the dating game. The dating game. Sorry. That's the dating game. And the dating game was people trying to decide who to go out on a date with. Whereas right. Love Connection, the people have already have gone out on this date and the show is basically going over the events and seeing who was a match. Six dates per show. That's so many that's, dates. That's a lot. For studs, it's two guys and three girls. So each guy goes out with, everyone goes out with everyone. Everyone goes out with everyone, except like the two guys. Even though one of the episodes that we did watch, the two guys uh, were roommates slash best friends. Yeah, I wondered if they always knew each other or not. I don't think so, but it would make more sense because one of the rounds is trying to guess, they say a statement like, who would be most likely to cry during a romantic movie and the guys have to guess who the girls would pick as doing that Mm -hmm. and if you knew the guy that would help if it's just a guy that you have no connection with it's basically like you're answering for yourself it's like well i wouldn't do that you know (laughs) so i watched as you know like two minutes of another one and it was baseball themed and the guys (laughs) were wearing baseball jerseys and the host did this goofy intro that was all baseball themed but he said that one of the guys is from atlanta and one of the guys is from minneapolis these are just guys they picked off the street and i was like wait do all the people in each show live in the same city I don't know. I assume they're just all in Los Angeles. That's what I would assume. It doesn't really seem like they care. It's not like The Bachelor where they're like, you're going to find love. It's just fun. The format of the game show is pointless. (laughs) because it is truly a harry potter quidditch type of thing where (laughs) the third round whoever don't get me started on quidditch there is a spoiler thing that the preceding two round two or three rounds before it don't matter at all because the third round is what decides everything i mean i don't really pay attention to the game part there are no points are there well they earn hearts oh hearts you remember those okay yes now it sounds like this is the 90s version of the love connection so so they've all gone on, a, on these dates with each other. And then the production team seems to have interviewed the girls and gotten quotes from them. Okay, now the guys have to guess who said what about them. And if they guess who said what about them, they earn a heart that they stick to yes. themselves. It's supposed to be that whoever has the most hearts wins but ends up being not the case because the third round is the girls say who they pick as their favorite and then the guys say who they pick as their favorite and if they match they get to go on another date but if the guy with less hearts than the other guy gets matched if they both match they both match they both win the gameplay is kind of dumb when i was thinking about how this compares to the bachelor or bachelorette And in The Bachelor Bachelorette, it's just all one-sided. It's like a bunch of people of one gender. And then there's the one person that they're all vying for their affection. And it's like none of the people that are competing even care if they like that person. Because they're all just competing for that person to like them. What I kind of liked about the studs format is that they both have to separately, independently say that they prefer that person to like move forward or go on a date. And also, you're allowed to not pick anybody. Yes. So at the end of the game, the girls kind of go down the row and they're like, who do you pick? And you can say neither, which is like kind of 
harsh. <laughs> and I think the show was also unique in that it was a lot of women objectifying men. Oh yeah. Probably more so than the men objectifying the women. Even though there's more women than men, it seems like the vibe is that the women have the upper hand somehow. It definitely does seem like they have the upper hand, especially since they are the ones making the comments. Mm -hmm. And some of the comments are pretty rude. You know, like yeah. <laughs> they're calling guys bland and they were dull. They're, they're, they're like kind of slamming them sometimes. So the girls get to have fun in that way. They're like, yeah, that that's what I said. You were, <laughs> you were dull. Sorry. <laughs> I love they it. They make fun of their haircuts. There's just a lot of innuendo or like sexy comments, but it seems so tame. They're not actually having sex. It's just like implications or hints or right. innuendo. Yeah. But the audience seems so horned up. <laughs> well, they've just watched 10 episodes of studs being filmed. <laughs> right. uh, real worked up. Because each comment is read and after each comment, they're like, ah! <laughs> you watch the show for the audience the audience is just making it worthwhile because if you took away the audience it's just a lot of awkward people I if you took away the audience most shows are terrible one thing that struck me about the show was this is a reality show kind of like a proto level reality show and these people they have not grown up with reality shows so they don't really seem to know There's how no to artifice They're yeah, just they like uh, I don't know. I was just asked to be here and I'm um, here. Right. So like, like they, I'm not trying to get famous on social media or segue this into anything else. Right. They're not trying to play to the camera. They are just being very genuine. They're not trying for a sound bite or like something really written sounding. It seems like the host has to do a lot of work. Like at what point was it around like the early 2000s when Survivor took off and changed everything? Like it just seems like these people are so normal looking. Yeah. Like this type of person with this kind of level of attractiveness would not be on this type of show. They wouldn't cast people like this anymore. It's not that they're unattractive. It's a very attainable level of, of attractiveness. Yeah. They just seem very normal. A Cleveland people. 10. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right, baby. <laughs> They'd be blowing people out of the water out here. But I mean, to just look at these people and be like, you're on TV. They chose you to be, because like none of them seem to have that good of personalities. They're not witty. They just like, kind of seem sweet and there. Did I ever tell you that my sister made it to the last round for one of the real worlds? No way. That's crazy. She was like a senior in college and she went to like uh, an audition that they had and she, she made it to like two or three Sarah? rounds. She can correct me. Yeah. That is incredible. I mean, that was a dream of, I think, everyone. I mean, that's age. embarrassing to say. That was my dream. I mean, I, wanted... I would say this and I would say this. Oh man, I would say that. And it'd be so great. I wanted to be no, on the wouldn't. real world. It just seemed so cool. The real world is also, it seems kind of quaint. You know, you're like, oh, yeah. oh wow, these are just regular people. They're not trying to be personalities. Um, This gave me a hankering to watch Eliminate. Oh, I was just going to bring or up what's the, a what's the other one? It was like... The Fifth Wheel. The Fifth Wheel. I mean, we've got to do the trifecta. Oh, there's so many. I was a big fan of Blind Date. Did you oh, remember? yes. Wait, Wait, are these... These might be early aughts. Oh, no. I think they were late 90s. Really? Um, okay. Yeah. So we can put them on the list. Blind Date was like the pop-up video of dating shows, which I really enjoyed. There was also a version of Blind Date that I also liked called Shipmates, hosted by Chris Hardwick. <laughs> it was basically the same as Blind Date. Wait, what about Singled Out? Is that on our list? No. <gasps> I, I love game shows, especially forgotten game shows. So if you want to talk about a game show, I'm What if we did um, a love theme month in February and we did all our games? <laughs> oh, please don't kid me because I am there for it. Can we wait three? Yeah, it's only three months away. It's only three months away. I will write that down and okay. not let you forget it. Okay. <laughs> I guess the big Wikipedia item for the studs entry is that one of the contestants on studs was ron goldman who when you sent me that ron goldman on studs at first i didn't immediately remember who ron goldman was it was this tough so then i google ron goldman and google pulls up it's like ron goldman american waiter and i was like american waiter and so then i click on it and i was like oh american waiter who was murdered with Nicole Brown Simpson. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess it's nice of Google to just be like, we don't want to just say Ron Goldman, American murder victim. 
you know, like they at least gave him a job. He was a waiter. He was a waiter and a friend of Nicole Brown Simpson. And he was on stead. He was handsome and was trying to make it as an actor. So like, that's what you do, I guess. I did watch the clip that you sent me. And there's a lot of like weird pop culture references on studs where the comments are just like, he looked like a pumped up Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> one of the comments that one of the girls he went on a date with said that he reminded her of Polly Shore. And I was like, Oh, really? Mm. Weird. Both dark. So there's a couple more things I wanted to say about studs. I guess it was pretty popular. On IMDb, they have a whole list of places it was referenced. I guess there was a whole episode of Doogie Hauser where Doogie and Vinny appear as bachelors on studs in a dream sequence, which I thought was funny. It's referenced in The Simpsons. You know that movie Made in America with Whoopi Goldberg? It's referenced in that. The one with Ted Danson? Yeah, the one with Ted Danson. Okay. So it was kind of in the zeitgeist it was a reference point for people but it got canceled because they were trying to make room for the chevy chase talk (laughs) show (laughs) which lasted five weeks (laughs) and they were so confident the chevy chase show was going to be a hit they were that confident because it sounds like studs was pretty popular and they were like oh well no 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 i mean this is pretty popular but the chevy chase show that's going to murder (laughs) and then they've got egg on their face so that's really funny very sad so the host of the show mark DiCarlo, he's also the voice of hugh neutron from the adventures of jimmy neutron i mean he definitely seems like he's got other skills besides tv hosting he He looks all like paul riser Yes, he looks a lot like Paul Reiser. Apparently, he was a high-winning contestant on game shows before he became a host. He was one of the biggest winners ever on Tic Tac Doe in the 80s or something. So basically, maybe he's like Ken Jennings, where they're like, well, you were such a big winner. Maybe we'll give you the hosting job. This is a weird show to be talking about now because of all the big Jeopardy debacle, which I'm like totally obsessed with. I love that it was a smooth sailing ship for like 30 years. (laughs) (laughs) And then it just imploded after Alex Trebek died. What's a comparison? Like what other longstanding person? Uh, Well, like, you know, I guess like an anchor, like Dan Rather or something, but those are always... Move transitions. Yeah, but usually the news director of NBC isn't behind the scenes trying to orchestrate himself getting the job. Yeah. And I do like that part of the reason he got canned is because he had a really unfunny podcast eight years ago. Is Mind Bialik officially the host? No. They made her officially the host of the primetime editions of the show and any spinoff shows that they're going to do, which I was like, does any of that stuff exist? exist yet. I don't know if I've ever seen or even heard of a primetime Jeopardy specials. I think they're just like restarting the search for the permanent everyday host. My feelings about hosts in general is just, couldn't it just be a robot? I mean, yeah, (laughs) they don't do anything. Mark DiCarlo on studs. I think he did a lot because he was the person bringing the personality. But like Alex Trebek and Pat Sajak and Dana White. I mean, like, They make me want to cry. They don't do anything. I guess a calming presence. I guess someone who is fitting with the tone of the show. But I thought it'd be good to be Maya and because she's a woman and she's actually has like a PhD in neuroscience or something. And she was Blossom. I don't know if she's hilarious anymore, but. Well, she was on the Big Bang Theory for a long time. That show's not really for me, but a lot of people thought it was really funny. So (laughs) she's got it all. She's got the full package. This was kind of a weird one for Accent Corner. There's not really any accents. The only thing that you could say really about about accent corner is that no one's really doing anything. My most 90s is waterfall bangs. I guess my most 90s thing were all of the references. I wrote down a list of the comments. Oh my god, it's a tiny terminator. Or he's got perfect Tom Cruise hair. Or wow, I'm dating Donald Trump. <laughs> There was this one episode I watched where the ladies in the beginning, the host is asking them, like, what kind of guys do you go for? Who's your perfect guy? This one girl said, I want someone with the body of Michael Jordan, but the brain of Ken Olin from 30-something. <laughs> <laughs> loser. (laughs) I was like, what? And that was one of the rare instances where the audience did not woo. (laughs) They were like, ooh (laughs) (laughs) Not a 37 crowd. The the host had to just be like, moving on. It was so good. And then Mad Magazine would be... Duds. 
Duds. I was gonna say scuds. What is a scud? Spuds. Spuds. Spuds would oh, be. Oh yeah, good. they're all potato farmers. Or like there's just all potatoes. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like those McNugget buddies, you know. Oh my god, that's what I was thinking of. Or the California raisins. Yeah. Oh, who I also really love. They seemed really cool to me as a kid. Aaron was like, What is Rachel gonna say about studs? And I was like, probably nothing. <laughs> this is not your kind of show. I was like eleven. The other ones we're talking about, I remember more vividly. It's a very special show to me. It was basically the closing time of my youth because that was the show that I would try to make it to before my parents came in my room to turn off my TV. And if I got to watch studs, it was a success. So okay. that's an important memory. <laughs> it was. Yeah. So it's very special to me, but it was very wild watching it back because I do also remember it being super saucy and this really wasn't. Maybe an 11 year old now would think it was saucy. I don't, I still don't think so. Mm, that's a good question. Yeah. Oscar started to really, like you can tell when we're talking about something that's of an adult nature. And he was like, what are you saying? What's, what's going on? What are you talking about? Tell me, tell me. And sometimes I, I do want to tell him, but I'm like, I can't even explain whatever this is to you. It's just, you don't understand any of the references. It's very adorable because I remember feeling that way when you're just like, everything is just so enticing. You want to know. Talk, we're talking about mortgages, Oscar. Tell me, tell me. I ain't being left out. <laughs> when a parent says they refuse to tell you, it just makes it worse. There's no way to win for anybody. The parent can't get the kid to drop it and the kid is not getting what they want. They think they're being let in on a secret or something, but mm -hmm. it really is deadly boring. Now we can move on to watch it, watch it. I don't know if you started watching yet, but only murders in the building. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I well, heard it was good. It's a real grab bag. I mean, it's like Steve Barton and Martin Short and then Selena Gomez. Yeah. It's about, it's about podcasts. <laughs> no, is it? Well, the three characters are brought together by their love of true crime podcasts. So okay. there's, that's the kind of theme where they kind of try to do their own. They're murderinos. In their building. Yeah, they kind of are murderinos. So it's, um. it's like old people, young people, podcasts, but also a lot of old New Yorkers. I like old New Yorkers. Living in a really old pre-war building. Oh, that's cool. Font is the New Yorker font. Which, and I mean, part of me was like, is the New Yorker sanctioning this? Producing this? I wouldn't be surprised, actually. I saw a clip of it when I discovered that Selena Gomez was involved, and she seems to be doing her best, but there's some jokes where he's like, what does my face say? And I was like, I don't know. You are you have no expression. He <laughs> popped in while I was watching it, and he goes, is she trying to act? And I was on a Reddit board, and I kind of made a joke about her acting not being good, and people got mad. They're like, she is a good actress. I've seen her in this and she's going, this is the, the way she's playing it. Haven't you ever seen Search Party? I, was like, I have seen Search Party. <laughs> I do not think you can co compare Selena Gomez to Alia Shakwat as an actress. Although I guess they're both child actresses. So some people thing. progress and some people don't. So, so far I would say I like it. They're releasing it in batches or something. So like oh, the, okay. I watched the first two or three and then the next one's not available till September 7th. So probably... By the time that one comes up, you will see the others. Probably because I was busy watching The Chair. It's a Netflix show starring Sandra Oh, and it's about a chair of an English department at an East Coast, vaguely Ivy League school. It addresses cancel culture. Is it like the Nicole Hannah-Jones thing? What's the Nicole Hannah-Jones thing? A famous person being denied tenure and then everyone being mad and saying it's not because of her qualifications, it's because of the things she said on Twitter. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's cancel culture stuff, but then there's also younger professors who are more with the students and there's these old mm -hmm. guard who have really low enrollment, but have been doing the same things the same way for 40 years. And it's very funny. David Duchovny is in a couple episodes. <laughs> mm. well, so this sounds right up my alley but i got rid of netflix i mean it's not going anywhere right no. maybe i'll take a few months break from netflix and i'll pop back up and i'll just be like in hog heaven look at all those things i missed right and you'll blast through all of that in like four days and then you can cancel it again <laughs> the show that i love so so much on netflix that i don't think is coming back is mind hunter i, I know mindhunter. i loved mind hunter too i love jonathan groff i loved yeah. him as a little puppy face that show was great nicole texted me the other day that said our man, Evan Peters, is at it again in American Horror Story. Again. Yes. Back, 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 back again. We probably should watch that <laughs> season because Macaulay Culkin's on it. Okay, so like it just started, right? We, I mean, we could just yeah, we can just, on Hulu. Okay. We can catch it. I have not watched an no, episode of American Horror American Story, Horror Story since, years. 
since Coven. Coven was the. the I, I saw season. Coven, and now I'm not sure. There's been so many. I, think I saw Freak Show. No, I saw Freak Show. They're all a blur. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely I, missed a few. I didn't see the Roanoke one. Coven was a season that was specifically designed to attract people like us, witchy girls who <laughs> like Stevie Nicks. You know, so I was like, I'm there for it, and I still had to force myself to finish the season because I just was grossed out by a lot of it. And and it's also Ryan Murphy and I hate the way he writes or like, I hate the way his shows progress. Well, you're not as bad as me because I watched both seasons of Scream Queens. Oh my God. But I mean, I think that's just, Scream Queens is a perfect example of something that I, as I'm watching, I'm like, this is horrible. Yeah. But I could not get enough of it. Like it was just a, like a true guilty pleasure, I guess. That's why I hate his shows because they seem like they should be good or like the premises are really great. You're like, oh my God, this is going to be, you've got all the elements. And then I get so mad because it's just so it shitty. Pulp, yeah, right? it's so shitty. And the execution and the writing is so bad. It just makes me upset that he's just ruined something that could have been good. Wait, yeah, I think that I've watched this entire show since we were on hiatus. White Lotus. Yes, I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> oh my God. The music was so good. It's probably lucky for our audience that we were on hiatus when White Lotus was on because <laughs> it really would have been Mayor of Easttown, our whole separate show about White Lotus. I just loved every single part on of Instagram, it. On Instagram, you were like, who do you think is going to die? And I was like, oh, I'll just be happy if any of them die. <laughs> I know, which I love. I'll be happy no matter who dies. I was very happy with the way I thought it was perfect, but I was sad about who died because I love I yeah. that character so much. I mean, that part of... Character. My enjoyment of the show was that I was on the White Lotus Reddit page and people were just so passionate having discussions about, you know, the, the hospitality industry, uh, you know, treatment of Native Hawaiians and, you know, Hawaiian history and male versus female characters in the show, power dynamics, like people were just feeling very strongly about it. But White privilege. My absolute favorite, favorite thing about the show is that I felt like it's like a perfect snapshot of where we are in the culture wars that was not ham-fisted in any way. You could just imagine any other show. They would be so hyper-concerned about appearing on the right side of history. I was really into the daughter and her friend because I feel like in any other show, they would be caricatures and they would just be like, Oh my God. The modern zeitgeist is them. Like their opinions are the main force behind like Twitter cancel culture. In other hands, I could have seen those perspectives being the dominant yes. perspective by the show, but I felt like it was so perfect the way that they spoke and then the parents spoke and they all made great points. Yes, they all made great points and they were the same level of villainous. The show kind of makes fun of everybody in a way, which was what was brilliant about yeah. it. Except for maybe the, the lady who works at the spa where you're just like, I just feel bad for you. Jerked around by Jennifer Coolidge. But there's no one really on the show that is clean hands and they have to win because they're so great. Everyone's right. kind of bad. You know? That's great, yeah. Someone on Reddit posted a chart and it was like chaotic neutral. It's the chart that they did for D&D. &D. Yeah. Chaotic evil, chaotic neutral, chaotic good. What are the other things besides chaotic? Well, whatever, they did for the characters. So there's two weaknesses in the show, in my opinion. It was two characters that I thought were, for whatever reason, like I didn't totally understand their motivation. Like the character of Rachel who marries this guy and then suddenly she's like, oh, but I don't want to stop working and be a rich man's wife. I want to have my own identity. It's like, you never discuss this. It's like she just woke up and was like, oh, who did I marry? What's going on? She's I supposed to be this girl who's been working hard in the city and someone who's been freelancing in New York for some amount of years would have like a little more guile. I don't know. To me, she kind of seemed like worst case scenario, Rory Gilmore. I've never seen the Gilmore. Oh, girl. I can't believe you haven't. I don't know if I could recommend it now <laughs> in this day and age, but Rory Gilmore, when they did the new season where it's like catching up with them 10 years later, she's a mm -hmm. freelancer in New York. She's a writer. And it just sounds like a horrible grind. It's not fun. And I can kind of see being that girl and being swept away and being like, this is fun. I don't usually get to have these great meals. I don't get to go on these trips. She's on this sort of train barreling towards the wedding. And then when she finally gets to the vacation, the honeymoon, that's when her brain gets to rest a little. So that's how I kind of saw her character. This is her finally realizing, oh, what have I done? I think it was also that actress just being like unblinking, confused, <laughs> hyper confused all the time. Like she's just woken up. I love that scene in the first or second episode where Rachel goes down to the pool for the first time and she's wearing kind of a 
idiotic outfit, like really stupid. And the two teen girls are making fun of her. And then she takes off her outfit and she's just got this hot bod. And the two teen girls are like, oh, wow. (laughs) That was what also struck me as strange about her. She just starts striking up a conversation with these teen girls that are clearly bitches and then they're rude to her and she's hurt by that i'm like of course they're bitches look at their faces i think that is deliberate on the part of the writing it shows you that she is a little bit naive and does it automatically know if someone's a good guy or a bad guy her saying hi to those girls can help you understand why she did not know that her now husband kind of sucked Mm -hmm. And like, she should have known that he sucked a long time ago. He is not hiding the fact that he sucks. Yeah. And a lot of the conversations on Reddit were like, it's just fascinating. Like the passionate arguments, like some people just saying, what's his name? Shane. He is annoying. He's aggressive. He's like gross. But like, he's technically done nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. And then people would just get so mad. Like, what do you mean? Some people that were convinced that Shane was actually making veiled physical threats to her. Oh, no. She stayed with him. And then everyone's like, what are you talking about? Like, downvote, downvote. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, No, 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 no. No, no, I I didn't think that. These are just people who don't like him so much. There has to be a real reason for me to hate him. But that character is so great because he's disgusting, but within the realm of normalcy. Oh, it's so normal. He's not over the top. Like, what Armand did to him was wrong. And if he had just apologized to begin with. And let it go. Yeah, but let it go. But Armand is the one that pushed it. Um, Oh, Armand. Also, just like shout out to Steve Zahn. My honey, Steve Zahn. (laughs) I love him and I've always loved him. Maybe I want to go back and watch Reality Bites. I gotta say, I was not ready to see his balls. (laughs) So you think it was a prosthetic? Probably. I mean. like laid on top. But it was just like so shocking. (laughs) What were you prepared to see poop coming out of an actor's butt in profile? Oh my God, I forgot about that. Oh my God. Greg only watched the first episode with me and then the last episode. Oh my God. That must have been a wild ride. Yeah. Apparently they're going to do another season like at a different hotel. Yeah, with uh, totally different people, I think. Mm -hmm. I'll watch it. Part of it was just watching Hawaii. And it also had like a succession vibe. Oh yeah, which is coming back next week. Which, yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. Finally, my life can get back to normal. Have you heard of the show Nine Perfect Strangers? Yes, I haven't started it yet. We watched maybe three minutes of it and it was so bad (gasps) like laughably bad when all of the marketing started happening for nine perfect strangers white lotus was still happening was about to have its finale or whatever and it seems like a similar kind of thing instead of a resort they're at this wellness retreat these rich people so it seems like it's a similar type of thing although nine perfect strangers has all these big name people in it oscar winner nicole Kidman. Oscar winner Nicole Kidman, Melissa McCarthy, Bobby Kennedy. Luke Evans from The Alienist. If you look at the list of people, you're like, geez, how much did this show cost? And then it's uh, executive produced by David E. Kelly. So it's just like, wow, there's all of these big deal elements. And then we started watching it. I was like, this is like The White Lotus, but so poorly done. Okay, but you need to watch the first three minutes of that Joss Whedon show that I forgot the name of and see if that's better or worse. With the dust? Oh, yeah. The steampunk one? I can't do that. (laughs) Okay, well, I'll have to watch the first three minutes of it. That's funny because Greg missed the White Lotus. And then when I saw Nine Perfect Strangers, I thought, well, maybe Greg will watch this with me because it's similar. The writing, the dialogue, just everything is just so bad that we were just like, nope, turned it right off. Well, yeah. I watched one other thing that I want to recommend. Did you ever see the British show, The League of Gentlemen? No. It was from the early aughts. The guys from that show, it's a sketch comedy show. They did a horror comedy anthology show called Inside Number Nine. And it's on Hulu. And it's just 12 episodes or something, but you should check it out. It's very funny and also scary. Oh, good. Ooh. All right. I'll check that out. Next week, we are going to do a request. Yeah, the big news was that we got our first email. This person already gets us because he asked us to do a show that was already far up on the list, which was Sequest DSV. Which I keep accidentally calling Sequest Deep Space Nine. I almost said Stargate <laughs> CD. Next week is going to be a mess of getting that title wrong, but I'm really excited to do Sequest. Is it Sequest Deep Space Velocity DSV? Ooh, I hope the pilot will tell us. Oh, we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. But until then, this has been Sliders and Wings with Val and Rachel. That's right. You can email us like the person who emailed us. You can do it too (laughs) at slidersandwings at gmail.com. All right. Good night. Good night, Rachel.